God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I agree with you, uh, Bishop. You can't go out in the street and see nobody in a situation and speak to it and make stuff change. Exactly. So, so being under authority. the authority is power. Yes, sir. It is, well, submitting yourself under your authority gives you authority, but it's, it's, I guess. Here's the thing. You see, you see we don't understand how dangerous this is. I do. This power that we're talking about, is this, this ain't no, this is serious stuff. Right. And, and so, the, so the apostle said, uh, we found somebody out there, out there preaching who wasn't, who, who wasn't part of you. You want to call down fire from him? Yeah. He said, whoa, wait up now. <laughs> you see, you see, this power is of such nature. We talk about infinite, unlimited power. Yes, yeah. sir. So God has constrained the control and authority of this power in one place. Yeah. That's the Son. Yes. The Son of God has proven that he will not take the power of God, the authority of God, and use it for any other thing other than God's will. Yes, sir. And he's always looking. He's always mindful that any thought, any idea, any action that he takes is always that which he is he's sensing. I know. He said in John chapter 5, the Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Amen. There is never, there is never anything that Jesus is doing right. that is disconnected from what the Father has initiated. And that's why we had a problem there. Yes, See, who wants to initiate something? I, I, and I, I, I agree with that 100%. And I think that we get involved in situations that obedience checks from time to time. Will you turn the other cheek when you slap in the face? And if you won't turn the other cheek, then we know the level of submission that we've actually grown to. And I agree with uh, 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 Bishop in the sense that I think that our submission has to be 100%. The submission has to be. So the, the centurion says this, I am a man under authority. Yes. And because he has submitted himself to those powers that were above him, he could exercise that authority in that he could tell one man to go do something and he was going to do it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I see there's a direct correlation between our submission to God and the extent to which he exercises his authority through us. It's almost like you can't give a two-year-old a gun. Because if you give him that kind of power, he's going to probably destroy himself and somebody else. So we are truly, and this, this is the beautiful part of it, I think, and the part that it has been a lot for me to struggle with, you have to submit to God first. There, 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 there is a total submission that's required of us to avail ourselves of the power and authority that is his. It's not ours. Well, I you mean, know, you know, the other thing, we really don't have, it, it's him operating through us, <laughs> which means it's got to be a level of submission. Right, but you know the thing too is that, I'm saying, uh, Bishop, was the fact is that Jesus led going to that cross was not, he did not show fear Weakness, yeah. going before the cross. He, oh, no, no, saying, I'm not yeah, I'm not addressing that aspect. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, there was absolutely no fear here, but what I'm saying is, is that we have to maintain the idea of what it is that God is trying to do. Right. And it, because see, the mission never changes, no matter what situation you face. Come on, now, that's the situation you face, it doesn't change the mission. Right. You got one goal. God is trying to win as many people into the kingdom while he's got a chance by any means necessary. Yes, sir. Amen, man. Yes, sir. What he found, this is what Jesus said, I'm meek and lowly in heart. Uh-huh. You will never see him acting outside of that. No, no. But you know, he also said, I am. <laughs> when they asked him who he was, and when they asked him, are you, are you the Messiah or not? He said, I mean, Jesus never shrunk away from being the son of God. And that's what literally, from his people's perspective, got him killed. Because he would not deny that he was the, the manifested image of the invisible God, that he was the, the actual son of God. And I think one of the things the, the brother addressed was that we show ourselves to be less than that. We yeah. represent ourselves as less than that. And that's not, that's not in accordance with the will of God. Our father is God, and we have to remember that. But by saying that, 
it means that we have submitted ourselves to him and we can operate in any any me any method that he wants us to. There's nothing that hinders us. Nothing. There's no force on earth that can literally stop a son of God from doing God's will. And if we don't operate like that, we start to operate in fear or we have these false representations of who our God is. Uh, David, when he went on the field with Goliath, said, who is this uncircumcised infidel to oppose the, the, the armies of God? Not the armies of David, but the armies of God. David knew who he was serving. Exactly. And I think sometimes I forget, I forget who God is, man. I forget how powerful he really is. You, I forget you, in circumstances, situations start causing me to operate in fear. It's like, well, man, what are you afraid of? You know, I think it's it falls right in line with the the the, the parable of two sons. Two sons, yeah, yeah. Okay, we 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 seem to think that we're the ones that got all of our our inheritance and went out, but we're not. We're the ones that stayed home uh -huh. and didn't know the yeah. authority oh, yeah. and the capability that was given unto us in the father's house. Come and on, so we, we're falling into to that realm yeah. and, uh, and and not even knowing. It, right, you know? right. Well, even the problem that I think we deal with, I think, I think if Jesus showed up in this Zoom meeting, he would upbraid us. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, say it. Mm -hmm. you get there. He would upbraid us. Okay. Okay, but he's here. But look, I'm saying for our hard heartedness and unbelief. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I do believe that. I, I do I, I do think the, that the person you gotta convince is it, it, it see, I thank God is waiting for you to convince yourself. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> of who you are in Christ. I, I, I think he's going to get the message across to you. Like, look, you still don't get it, dude. Uh -huh. <laughs> if, if what happens is we, we, we've been programmed so much, and then we continue to be exposed to the wrong programming. See, uh -huh. we're in and out of this thing with this programming thing. Uh -huh. This whole world, every signal, every message the world is sending is intended to program you in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. We can yeah. deal with that. And what God is trying to get you to understand is, look, in John 17, Jesus told them clearly, Come on. you are not of this world. Come on now. Amen, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're not of this world. And, then, and until you actually, until you actually believe that in your heart. Come on, brother. Come on. Do you actually believe? I'm, I'm, I'm. This is a powerful thing, man. Come on. Because once we ever grasp the fact that we actually have been taken out of this world and that we're in a real kingdom, come out. Amen. Different from all this other stuff, then we'll start reacting to it like we're in another kingdom. Amen. Come on now. Hey, Chris, that, I think that's what we're trying to say. Oh, the thing is that we are wrestling with this thing. Right. Because it takes something for God to finally get this program to take. But you know something, Peter, after, after we've taken that, we still. I, what I have a problem with sometimes, remember what his agenda is. We were taken out of the world for a purpose, but we were left in the world for a purpose as well. And, and that's to take other people out of the world. Right. So our actions, our actions are toward the end of gaining people to the kingdom. So we are really here to undo the works of the devil. And of course, what, what, what scripture said, we are here to preach the gospel of reconciliation. The bondage, and I think uh, Brother Addison mentions this often, he said those who are in bondage to Satan, the ones who we are here to free these people from that bondage. However, he has oppressed them. Our job is to re-secure them. And when I say it's our job, I don't say it's our owners, but it's God's mission. The plan of salvation implemented through us is to gain other souls to the kingdom. Let me say this to you. The first place God power needs to be demonstrated is in the conquering of you. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. That yeah, the first place that power needs to operate is to overcome and conquer you. You, right. And as soon as God can conquer you, Come as on. soon as God can gain control over you, Come then on. he can evidence his power. He Come can on. manifest his authority. Come so on. the problem is, he, he here to wrestle man with you. Yeah. And, well, and, 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 I, and I think that the, the, the awareness of where we're headed kind of helps us get there. It's, it's kind of difficult to send a man on a journey when he don't know where he's going. 
So we understand that the first conquest that had to take place is God's we accepted him, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou, you're Lord. And not Lord of the world, but Lord of me. And, 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 and that's the first place, like you're saying, I agree with that 100%. After that has, what does he say, bringing all things into submission right. uh, to obedience to God once right. your own obedience has been fulfilled. So we understand there's a place of, of, of submission that we have to come to even to be effectively used to God to bring other things into submission to him. Right. But I think but, but if we don't understand that we're being used to bring other things in submission, now I'm gonna get in a I'm gonna get in conflict with the cop because I don't know I'm standing in a calm place in order to help God bring him to his presence. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna give you a verse. So, I want you to look at Ephesians chapter five. Very simple, very simple text. And, and it's talking about it's talking about uh marriage. Uh, in the sense that we can understand it, but second, underneath what he's really talking about is is each of us and our connection to the head. That's really what it, that's really what he's talking about. So you look at and you go all the way down to for the sake of time, you go all around verse number twenty. So he, he starts out by saying, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. In the fear of God, not man. <laughs> now, Amen. Now listen now. So next he's going to start talking about the relationship that exists between the husband and the wife. Yes, sir. But he's talking about in the context of your relationship between Christ and the church. And that's why he asked that phrase at the end, as unto the Lord. Mm. Because when you start going down through this, now, yes, what he's sir. trying to really get to is the as unto the Lord part. Yes, sir. But here's the, here's the part that I find that we have a problem with. Verse number 30. You see it? You see verse number 30? Yes, sir. You're right, for well, we are members of his body and of his bones. We are members, listen carefully, we are members of his body, mm -hmm. of his flesh, <laughs> and of his bones. Now, the, now, here's the picture there. The picture is, is that when Christ was on the earth, he, he the, the scripture said the word was made flesh. Yes. So he's got a body that allows him to participate in this physical realm. Yes. That body yeah. is of absolute and total submission and control to him. Yes. Now, when he is when he is crucified, resurrected, and ascended, he has come back to us now in the presence of the spirit. Yes. And now he takes residence in us, and collectively now, he's got another physical body of flesh and bone, but it's not the one he originally had. Now it's us. Yes. Mm. 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 Got that? Mm -hmm. well, here's the problem. This hand has a brain. Mm. Has a mind. Has a will. Mm -hmm. Can, can choose to rebel or agree with him or disagree with him. Mm. You see it? Yeah. Yes. And what he's trying to tell you is, if listen, if you are going to be a part of this body, you, you gotta you gotta look at the body that he had and see how it operated. See, when he was in the body on this earth, he never had no problem with his hand arguing with him. <laughs> Woo. And, and what we don't understand is that this thing he's he brought us into is one of the deepest, most intimate relationships you could ever have. But because God has created us as a creature with free will, He's basically got to bring you into submission. He's got to bring you into surrender. He's got to bring you into total denial. 
He got to bring you into selflessness in order for him to be freely, to be free to do what he wants to do. You see, that is what's hindering the power from being manifested in our lives. And that also business with the, the perception that Chris was talking about, though, being weak. You see, you see, you see, I was listening to a song the other day that it just talked about this guy singing this song and he's telling God he wants to be in the same mindset that Jesus was, that when things come up, that eventually he will say, nevertheless, not my will. Yes, sir. But thy will be done. And what I'm telling you is, see, the power of God lies right there at that intersection. Right there where the major blocks are being uh, occur. Because God needs for you. Listen, when it comes down to power, there's too many things you don't know. Yes, sir. You, you got unlimited power in your head. And there are too many factors involved in situations that you don't know. You can, he can't afford to allow you out there based on what you think. Mm. Based on how you feel, based on what you don't know. He might be trying to save the police officer that you're trying to rise up again. Woo. He, he, that police officer might to see somebody who got such humility and such, and such a godly attitude about him that he gets his attention not to worry about, about his conduct. Come on now. That's what I'm saying. He, he, it's something different about this, but he might not ever open your mouth and tell you. But he'll say that there's something different about you. Hey, look, he'll take his hand off his gun. He can't get, he can't get that view all pumped up and all. <laughs> Listen, when you got authority, you ain't got to flaunt it. Come on. <laughs> The scripture says that they that have power and authority, they resort to that as a last measure, not the first measure. Come on. <laughs> God resort to his power as a first measure when he's dealing with us. He loves suffering. Woo! Listen, there's a day coming when he's gonna demonstrate his power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But right now he's gracious, he Come is on. merciful, he is kind, he is patient, but he's got all power. But right now he's trying to win, folks. Come on. <laughs> and that's what he's calling us in. That's what he's calling us into. Yes, sir. He's calling us in our, in our dying in the place where we're willing to die. That is the place where the power can be released. Mm. Mm. But the said, dying ain't popular enough, and he knew it. That's why he said, few, <laughs> few that be that find it. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody don't want this. It's going to look like it. It's going it's to give you the appearance that you're weak. But yeah. when you submit to God in the time of God, want to exercise his authority, it will show up. Come on. Come on. But, but you can't you can't call it down because the police don't rub you the wrong way. You all pumped up. You like, they like, no, 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 that ain't how we do it. We don't yeah. move like that. Right. Right. It's a, I, I, I understand that. In the sense that this is a very this is a very this is a very sifting and purifying thing. When when you when the Old Testament when Elijah called down fire from heaven, he admits in the scripture that he wanted God to prove that it was him that was doing it. And that appears as though there was some kind of cardinal, you know, manifestation of power. But the reality of it is is that it takes a lot of power not to slap a man that just slapped you in the face. It does. Or one that, you know, mistreats you. It takes a lot of power not to curse that lady out that jumped out that car. Come on and cussed you out. That, that, was a, that was an extreme show of power when you allowed this woman to curse you and call you the N-word and then that in front of your daughter and retaliate. Come yeah. on. There was a tremendous yeah. amount of power that was, was, was exercised and displayed right there, but it wasn't our power. It was God's power. It was his power to subdue the rage in your heart. And I think that is the power that we begin to display and must display because God is, I believe, calling us to lead this nation to him. Yes. When we are able to exercise <laughs> or display that power, I believe that God is going to be used to draw them into his presence where they can avail themselves of the same power. Exactly. There is a lot of power in submission. Come on, Submitting to somebody else's will is the hardest thing that I have ever done in my life. Even knowing God's will, it's like, man, I know you're the one, and I know what you want done is the way it should be done. But for me to turn the other cheek and to not retaliate, Lord, help us. 
I mean, <laughs> that that took they, that takes a lot, even even on a day to day basis. Even have they haven't been saved when somebody wrongs you, or when you see something that you know is jacked up, not to address it. Is it man? It, it, it takes more power not to address it than it do to address it because. It's one thing, like even with Peter, Peter wasn't a coward to me. Peter just didn't know how to fight like Jesus told him to fight. Put your sword up. Peter would swing on a man and take his ear off, of course. That wasn't his, that wasn't the problem, problem for him. Peter didn't have the power not to swing. Yeah. And that's what Jesus, <laughs> he, he, that's what that's what he exercised in him. He showed him that's not a way, that's not the way we fight down here. Just not the battle for you now. Overwhelming somebody is not, you gotta submit. And Peter didn't know how to do that. So he, what did he do? He ran. Well, you see, he's asking Peter to, to come and be one with me and understand how the authority and the power move. Yeah. The authority and the power move according to the will of God. God That's has willed it, Peter. Yeah. Peter, don't try, to take, don't try to take the authority of God and the power of God and use it for something that God has not willed. Woo! But, but, but I think when we're saying... go to the cross. When we're saying... Will to go to the cross. Don't fight it. What you need to do, Peter, is that whatever you can do to, uh, to align yourself with God will be fulfilled. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Embrace, embracing the cross takes a lot of strength. Exactly. It, it really takes a lot of strength to embrace the cross. It takes the power to flow through you. Exactly. It takes it take, it take the Holy Ghost working in you to embrace the cross. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that's not something we can do in the flesh. Right. I, I, <laughs> but this is the reason why I think that the church has the church is failing. It's failing and and fulfilling the very purpose for which Christ was sent. Mm -hmm. Because see, it, it, it's not complex. It all comes back to the stuff we've been talking about. Right. We've been talking about you gotta deny yourself. You gotta be talking about look that you that God wants to bring you to the place where you are dead. When you look at Ephesians chapter 30, when he says that we are members of his body. Of his flesh and of his bone. Yes. You are the instrument now that he uses. <laughs> oh, what, what, you, you are the hand that he wants to lay hands, that he wants to deal with to somebody. Come on now. But you have to be in absolute agreement with him. Come on. Come on. And, 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 you know, <laughs> this is what he prayed for in John 17 when he said that they may be one. Yes. This is, this is some serious stuff now. Yeah. And you and even, not, he even told you to run out there with your, with your jacked up lack of knowledge view. <laughs> Talking about in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. What I need for you to do it, first of all, let me get control of you. Let me deal with you so that when you open your mouth and say that. Come out. Come out. You're saying that because you got a first story. You got to work in here first. Come out. He just said the father working hitherto and yeah. I work. Come out. So you can't you can't leave that first part out. Come out. <laughs> See, if the Father ain't working here too, if Jesus ain't working here too, I don't care what you do out in the street, it ain't gonna work. Woo. But if you got something on the inside, why he rolls up on the inside and says, "All right, <laughs> let's go to work." Just go to work. That's what you need to have first. Yes. And when we got there, you ain't got to worry. Everything will work out. Everything will work. And you know, they about to say, you know, back with that power again. What about the scripture right here, Bishop? What it said is that uh, God has not given us the spirit of fear. But there was Second Timothy, uh, what one seven, Elder? No. Uh -huh. Power and love into a sound mind. Yes, sir. He hasn't given us the power. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear, but a power and love into a sound mind. Exactly. Not we, we, we're not submitting because we're afraid. We're submitting on, because brother. we've been ordered to. And that's we're not, we're that's not walking into the fiery furnace because we, we don't have the power to fight not to go in there. Right. We're walking in there because that's where he told us to go. Come and, on, I, and I think that is that is the for me the behavior that has to be displayed because if you think I'm afraid <laughs> of you, if you think that I'm afraid of you, and I'm doing because of, I'm fearful of you, you're going to glorify yourself. Exactly. But if you realize that what I'm doing is because I've been instructed of God, that with no fear in my heart concerning who you are, when Jesus stood there with Pilate, and Pilate said, don't you know I had the power to release you or you know, whatever? And he looked at him and said, you have no power over me except to be given to you of God. And that's if, we do not function, Go ahead. if we do not function in that, 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 that uh, mode, 
then we discredit the God that we serve. Exactly. Because no man has power and authority over us except God oh. allows it or except we can the will of God and, and put ourselves in a position where God is not operating. Come on. So for me to go and say, you know something, you got the gun in my head, you show forth the song, you <laughs> do what you do, and you see what God's gonna do. I, I, I'm not stepping outside of that. And I think that when we put it back in his hands, Come on now. then he's glorified. See, Come you on. might think that you bad and that you subdued me because, you know, I'm a coward and I'm scared of you. I'm not afraid of you. Come on, brother. He's he not giving me a problem. He's not giving me the spirit of fear, man. It, it, it ain't meant, it's not longer in me to be afraid of a man. It's not in me anymore. Come on, but brother. I fear him. And I fear that if I've done something outside of his will, I might be at your mercy, devil. But if I am confident in my heart that I am walking in accordance with the will of God yeah, and that God has you. called me to be in this situation, yes, sir. man, please. I believe that Stephen, when he stood there being stoned, oh, he, he said stood. he stood up and saw Come on. the son standing at the right hand of the father. Oh. Was that weakness? No. Nope. Was the weakness when he prayed, don't charge this, this sin to their account? Was it Jesus' weakness that held him on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do? Jesus never forgot who he was. And and I and I and I and maybe it's my sticking point is that the sons seem to have. We seem to have either not known the power of our God, not believed the power of our God, or really not realizing who we are in Christ in Christ. Come on. Nothing has authority over us. That's why it's called the kingdom of God. Come on. Nothing has authority over our lives except the God that we serve. And Elder, did he, in the scripture said that when he was beaten, did he say, he didn't say a mumbling word? He, I he, work. And, and Chris, he knew who it was. He, he didn't even cry out. He went silent, right? What did he say? It, it pleased the father. It Woo. pleased the father, not man. It pleased the father that he should suffer these things. Uh -huh. It was God's will he was on that cross. It was God's will that he was going through that. He didn't look at man as having any authority. He was like, when he told Pilate, who was in that particular instance, was the representative of the world system, he literally told him, man, you, you, you got nothing over me, except the father above my father give you this authority. You have no, you got no influence on my life. Not and I think that for us to realize that causes us to behave in a manner, sometimes that's a lot more indicative of where God would want us to go. We can't blame white people for, for beating us down, even though they do it. We can't put the onus and the authority back in their hands saying that they can overwhelm our God. Man, for me to say that you have authority in my life and to tell me that I should worship you. I mean, why would I praise and worship a God, serve a God, they ain't got no more authority in a man? Yeah. Come on. And I think that's what we do. We either put the authority in our own hands and we realize we are not sufficient to, 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 to accomplish it. Come on. Or we put it in the hands of somebody else that ain't no more sufficient than we are. We are the sons of God. Come on, bro. Let me ask you. <clears throat> Let me take you to a point I think that all of us need to leave this meeting with. I, I think this is important because I see it in my own life quite a bit. Now, what do you think about this? I want you to think about those contentious times when you were brought into a uh, you were brought to a point of contention with some kind of opposing authority. Come on. Whether we're a policeman or a, or a supervisor, or doesn't matter who it was. A president. You to this point where you, that this point of contention. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. When you got there, did you sense, do you recognize that at that point, you are either going to be moving in the spirit Hmm. Or you're going to be drawn out into you. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I think that's why many of us have repented. I need to make sure, I need to make sure all of us understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> At this point, Come on. and, and, and this, the, the situation itself is provoking something, to, it's stirring something in you. Yes. And what I want you to understand is you see, when you, when you enter that place, because you've been, because you, 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 you've sustained your connection. Yes, sir. You move in that situation totally different if you got to try to go to that place. Yes. In other words, if you're walking in a hookup with God, when you get there, you're good. 
But if in that situation you got to try to hook up with God, you ain't serious. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. You can't go to that place disconnected. Right. Because, see, first of all, you don't know what is coming. You don't know what is, what, when it's going to happen. And yeah. then once you get there, you ain't got no control over it. Come on now. And what you get there, we find ourselves being drawn out in the flesh. Yes. Yeah. Opposed to being pulled from the spirit. Yes. Then we start trying to quote scriptures and start trying to say stuff. And God said, it ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like being in the pulpit trying to, do, trying, trying, to, trying to be used of God. And God ain't there. I done been there. God, the Bible, reading scripture, ain't nothing happening. God said, you read all the verses you want to read. Woo! 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 Listen, <laughs> this thing is by the Spirit. It ain't by you. And because you've not done what you're supposed to do, you preach. Come on. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I can tell you yeah. that don't work. So in these mm -hmm. situations, you see, what we've got to do is allow all the things that God is doing in our lives to, put the, to push us deeper into this oneness mode, this I'm the, I remember there's a body mode and I'm one with him. When you're there, come on. And the contention might happen. Listen, I, I can I can count numerous times when I did with very serious problems mm. that could have got me in serious trouble. Come on. Had I not listen, when I walked in the door, mm. <laughs> I was already hooked up. Woo! When that thing went down, when I look back on it, I'm like, good Lord, man, I could have easily gone to jail. Yes, sir. I could have been. I could have been a part of prison ministry. Come on, <laughs> inside. Mm. And all I'm saying is, I think that's the place that that's the thing that God is trying to build in us. Right. That that thing that, where, that, that no matter what the situation, no matter what the condition, no matter what, that I'm looking for God. I'm yielded to Him. I want Him. And my tr listen, that's what it's talking about when it said the just shall live by faith. Yes, sir. Not circumstances. Listen, you ain't got to tell the police officer he ain't got no authority over you. Woo! You got that thing right with God. Listen, you know he ain't got no power or authority over you. You ain't got to flood it. Come on. You, you, you people have to deal with that issue. You even have to say anything along those lines. Because when you're really under the influence and the power of God, God is in control. Come on. I think that when, when you when he, he,